with the background given so far we are now ready to look at how magnetic field behaves in presence of magnetic materials. Before we do that let me first review just in a few lines or a couple of minutes what we have learnt so far. We have learnt that one magnetic field is produced by electric currents the related laws that we learned are bio severed and ampere's law second we learned that curl of b is equal to mu 0 j r in free space and divergence of b at any point is always 0. And therefore, as a corollary we also learnt that b can be expressed as curl of a vector potential which we kept calculating. Third, we learnt when I take a magnetic dipole or a magnetized medium with magnetization m where m is the magnetic dipole moment per unit volume then this is equivalent to a bound current j b which is curl of m and a surface current k bound which is minus n cross m and we solve certain examples using these. What we want to do now is develop a machinery to using these to deal with situations where there are magnetic materials sitting with that develop magnetic moment when a field is applied. So, to do this let us start with the equation curl of B is equal to mu naught j. Now, in presence of currents if there is a current density j let me write with red j r prime and there are suppose these magnetic materials that get magnetized one here one here and so on that develop a magnetic moment m when put in these field what happens then. Now, this b due to both the free current as well as the bound currents. So, what I should be writing in calculating this magnetic field is curl of B is equal to mu naught j free, where free is the current which is done from outside plus mu naught curl of M. Remember what is curl of M? We just discussed curl of M is j bound and therefore, I can write this equation as curl of B minus mu 0 m is equal to mu 0 j free. It is interesting that this is very similar to equation we wrote in electrostatics in presence of polarizable medium. Recall what did we write there? We wrote curl of epsilon 0 e plus p was equal to rho free. Just like we identified in electrostatics this vector epsilon 0 e plus p as the displacement vector, 
we are going to identify here this vector here b minus mu naught m as an auxiliary vector h. Just like d was not electric field, but just an auxiliary vector which was related to free charge, we are introducing a vector h which is related to free current density. It is not the magnetic field. If a charge moves in this region, the force on it will be determined by b. h is an additional vector which we are introducing that is related only to free current which we can control from outside. So, what we have introduced is a field h which is mu naught b minus m whose curl is equal to mu naught j free. It will be even better if I divide by mu naught all throughout and define h as b minus m over mu 0, so that curl of h is equal to j free. Just like again recall divergence of d was equal to rho free. This is similar to that that is why I divided by h uh, mu 0. So, to again sum it up magnetic field B and if there is a magnetization M, we have identified a vector H which is equal to B upon mu 0 minus M or equivalently B equals mu 0 times H plus M such that curl of H is j free. That is the curl equation. What is the other equation I have in the magnetic field? It is divergence of B which is always 0. So, I have got these two equations in presence of magnetic material or in presence of magnetic moment and free currents both. Again these are very similar to the equations we had for electrostatic situation where I had curl of E 0 and divergence of D equals rho free. This is very similar starting from curl of H is equal to J free and curl of B divergence of B is equal to 0. The question is how do we get the magnetic field? If divergence of h was 0, then it would have been very easy because these two equations together would have given me equations which are there for b, curl of b is equal to j and divergence of b is equal to 0, but divergence of h need not be 0 as I will show here. Divergence of h is equal to 1 over mu 0 divergence of b minus divergence of m. And this quantity need not be 0, although divergence of B is 0. Why? Suppose I have a material, take a simple material, and I have m varying. For example, it could be shown by the length of the arrow, this length, then length could be increasing. It could be even more out here. So, as I am moving in the direction this way that component of m is increasing and divergence of m is not 0. So, divergence of h need not be 0. Okay. Again this is similar to curl of E being 0, but curl of D remember was not 0. And therefore, we need additional technique or some more information to solve for the electric uh, for the magnetic field in presence of magnetic materials. Before we end this lecture, I want to give you a feeling for how the bound currents arise out of magnetic moments or how we can interpret them. 
recall that we had j bound which was diverge a uh, curl of magnetic moment and surface current which was minus n cross m. Also recall that a small loop of current is equivalent to a dipole. I can turn this argument around and say that a dipole is equivalent to a current carrying loop. Now, look at a situation suppose there is a material that has some magnetic moment let us say in the direction going up a uniform magnetic moment. Then if I look at a small portion of it here this small portion has a dipole moment in the direction going up and that would be equivalent to a current going counterclockwise along these surfaces which I am now going to darken. So, on these surfaces on the side surfaces there is a current going. If this whole thing has uniform magnetic moment then what is going to happen is all these currents which are on the adjacent surfaces notice if there is an adjacent block out here that I take on this the green current is going to be going down, the red current is going to be going up and since m is uniform they are going to cancel. And therefore, the only places where the current is going to be left without being cancelled is going to be on these surfaces outer surfaces of this block. And what is the amount of these currents? It is n cross m with a minus sign. So, outside I am going to have n cross m left and that is the surface current that we talk about which is k. On the other hand if these m at this point at the red point let me show it here red point and the green point here was slightly different. Then as I move to the right as I move to the right the vertical component. So, let us say this is x direction the y component of m is changing and therefore, the currents at the interface are not going to change. If the currents do not change that means, if m varies then the currents and the surfaces do not change and they contribute to the bulk current. Here m y is changing with x and therefore, this is related to curl of m and that is what gives you the bulk current. So, this is a physical interpretation of bound bulk current and bound surface current similar to the similar interpretation we had for the bound charges and bound bulk charges bound surface charges coming out of a polarization.